Good morning, everyone. Here are the Sanibel Island and Southwest Florida update as of December 18th, 2022. Yesterday, I reported that the Fort Myers Beach Santina Community Resource Center was closing due to less residents using it. Well, the local news station ran a story today that residents are not happy with the center closing down. 120 people used the showers daily right before the city closed them and hauled them away. 120 people still seems like a need to me. Residents are hoping the showers are moved to Beach Baptist Church, but that is not what is happening at the moment. I am pretty sure the issue boils down to money. I am assuming the city is footing the bill to run the showers, washing machines, etc. CFI Nonprofit Employee Assistance Program is now accepting applications. Fish of Sanibel Captiva, the nonprofit organization that provides a food pantry, social services, and education to those who live and work on Sanibel and Captiva, will oversee the application process and distribute the funds. Distribution to those who qualify will begin immediately. Applicants' anonymity will be maintained. Qualified individuals can apply for up to $2,500 in assistance. The program is for employees of nonprofits like Crow and SCCF. If this applies to you, you can go to the FISH website and print out the application to fill out and mail in. Lee County Update. The permitting lobby for the Lee County Department of Community Development on Fort Myers will adjust lobby hours of operation to 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. weekdays beginning Tuesday, January 3rd. Additionally, the temporary waiver of building permit fees for hurricane-related repairs, which has been in place since permitting resumed after Hurricane Ian, will cease January 3rd. In other words, permits will start costing money starting January 3rd. Just a reminder, Sanibel has a different permitting office. Even though Sanibel is technically in Lee County, they are incorporated, so Sanibel has their own permit office. The only permit fees Sanibel is currently waiving is the demolition permit fee and the temporary use of an RV fee. For vacationers who had scheduled vacations to Sanibel and Captiva, but the vacations had to be canceled because of Hurricane Ian, most everyone has been receiving their refunds with very little issues. The rental companies like Royal Shell and South Seas is very accommodating for refunding cancellations. A couple smaller resorts like Jensen's will not give refunds. Instead, they want to give credits for future stays. The main complaint is against the rental company American Realty on Sanibel and Captiva. They refuse to give refunds telling vacationers they should have got trip insurance and telling them to get a lawyer. All I can say is wow. I always get trip insurance, but still I don't feel like American Realty has a right to say no refunds. Some of these vacationers had their vacations paid in full, like around $10,000. You have to keep in mind, some, a lot of people will uh, rent a condo for an entire week, and that can run up to like over $10,000. That is a lot of money, and that's just one family. There are a lot of complaints against American Realty right now. When there are dozens of rental companies on Sanibel and Captiva giving refunds with no issues, and then you have one company saying no refunds, it seems a bit scammy and rude to me. Very, very rude. Honestly, I feel like the Chamber of Commerce on Sanibel needs to step in because this is causing a lot of negativity and bad publicity towards Sanibel and Captiva Islands. When it comes down to it, Sanibel and Captiva are vacation destinations. That's how they get most of their tax money. So they're like biting the hand that feeds them. I just, I, I really feel like the uh, Sanibel city government needs to get, get, get involved because er, it's just odd that there's only one company that won't give refunds, but everyone else will. It doesn't seem right to me, um, but that's my opinion. Thanks for listening.